Every picture tells a story. Sometimes we don't like the ending. Sometimes we don't understand it. Quite enough of that, I think. Enough preliminaries. Here's the performance you've been waiting for. Proves I am without prejudice and have a fine sense of humour. Sword and crown are worthless here. I invite everyone to dance. Labourers, lawyers, shirt and gown all make their little front. This life is full of random deaths and heaps of grief and shame. So few are soothed by accident. You want someone to blame? Fire, plague, and strange disease. Drowned, murdered, or if you please. A long fall down the basement stairs. None are expected. No one cares. I often must work very hard. Sweat running down my skin. After the dance, I then must rest. And the eating can begin. Time to eat. Death is the ultimate equalizer. All have the right to be eaten. <laughs> Get a knife for a gentleman. Don't push. All will be served. So to speak. Wicked thing. Feasting while Wonderland is destroyed. I'm not the enemy you seek, Alice. I tried to hide this bit of Wonderland from that beast. Appeasement's never clean. We must all play our assigned roles. Are you a pawn or a queen? An idiot or a practiced fool? However this turns out, consider the prospect that you've been misled, Alice. Let us by whom? No! Who set that bloody train in motion? Where has it come from? It arrived when you arrived. And it's more horrible even than you can currently imagine. The death of a dream. Caterpillar may know how. My mouth tastes like bile. Where's the brute that hit me, Nanny? Nasty prats out cold. Not dead and more's the pity. What did he want? What they all want. Money didn't earn. What were you thinking, button into that mess? You could have been killed. Nanny, my mind's in pieces. I still have terrible visions and I need to know. About the fire. Same as always. You need to move on, Alice. So do I. Well, at least she's not spewing that asylum nonsense. My past is dead, I killed them, I should have saved them, I should have died. Her mind was in shambles. Radcliffe thought familiar faces would bring her round. After a year, he lost interest in her inheritance, greedy sod. Still, always asking his bizarre questions. Heavy dose of madness, I'd say, but honest is never the best policy in this life. When she wasn't comatose, she gaped, eyes like pinwheels, drooled, and occasionally squeaked. Never uttered a sensible sound. And like the child she was, she kept her secrets close. Gone off some lurkers, common as cockroaches. And those poor tykes are food for perverts, like the blameless ants that wasps consume or spiders' feeble prey. You 
visited my room at Rutledge. What you were you... You recall that? Radcliffe paid me for a bit. A woman alone sometimes does what she doesn't particularly feel like doing. As you know. Nurse Whitless said you'd fallen on hard times. I'm no drunk like her. I'm hurting no one. Hookham's not a bad life. Except for the pimps. She also said you might have my rabbit. Please, Nanny, talk about the damn fire. Never seems to help. Look, Alice, I can't give you what I don't have. Radcliffe wrote the inquest report. I'll take you to him. Besides, he's got your damn rabbit. You should remember that. All right, but Mr. Radcliffe's useless. <sighs> don't I know it? to the ground, Bill. Yeah, I've been scouting around. You better come on. Mind the latch. You do have my rabbit. Forgotten your manners? And what else, I wonder? You abandoned it at Rutledge Asylum, my dear. We've been over this before. In a huff as usual, oozing with attitude and accusatory flummery, I've stolen her rabbit. Ridiculous pretext. She's here about the fire again. All the mad child wants to talk about. My report found her family dead by misadventure. She won't accept it. It goes on and on about her killing memories and her need to know the truth. The alleged truth is the fire began in the library when the cat knocked over a lamp. The blaze trapped her parents and sister upstairs. Sister Lizzie never even unlocked her door, died in her bed. The guilty cat always sets her off. She denies it, makes no sense, it can't be, etc. Agreed. From the outset, Alice was my candidate for the pyromaniac. The girl had a fixation with fire. I once remarked that I thought she might have had a larger role in causing the tragedy. She suffered some sort of psychotic episode. Did I rip his head off? I wanted to. What's left of my brain will explode. Is it mad to pray for better hallucinations? Perhaps I'm fated to expire right here. <laughs> 